Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I just want to do a quick couple updates. Uh, we had a few uh, spiders pass away uh, all yesterday, as a matter of fact. This one here is my Phidippus regius female. Um, she's the one that laid a couple egg sacs. Uh, I still have four babies left that are so far so good with those. <clears throat> she was a uh, you can see her there. I found her last night when I came home from work. She was just kind of there. And um, when I went to, I sprayed her down, sprayed the enclosure and watered her. She didn't move at all. <clears throat> I kind of thought that was odd, so I checked her out. And yes, yeah, she, uh, she had passed away. Um, I also lost um, a Phidippus Odyx jumping spider which was an older male um, we found not too long ago uh, in the house. And one of the baby Salmopeus Cambridgei slings uh, didn't make it through its molt. I found that one last night. Um, I thought the molt was clear because I could see the molt on the outside of its little burrow. But when I lifted the molt, um, the tarantula was still attached and it was all curled up and dry. So I'm I'm assuming it tried to molt a couple days ago. I haven't checked on the babies in a few days. So I would say any time from Monday till yesterday. Um, not sure what happened with that one. Um, they've been sprayed. Um, sprayed them a couple times to give them water. <clears throat> I can't keep for some odd reason... Um, I put Legos in there for water dishes and they just keep spilling them so the water doesn't stay. Um, yeah, that one may have been me. But, uh, yeah, there's three, uh, three deaths. It's a lot, most I've had since, uh, <clears throat> my, uh, mature male Anense and Syria Cosmos Birthday both died on the same night. So hopefully <clears throat> we won't have any more. Uh, but this part of the whole tea keeping process is that you're going to lose them. Uh, they don't live forever. And you do the best that you can uh, to keep them alive and hope that what you're doing is good. You always second guess yourself when, you know, something happens. Like with, with uh, Samopeus, Cambridge, that one, I'm probably second guessing myself on, on that one. Uh, her here, she, she was an older female. Um, she was sent to me same size that she is right now, um, three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit less than, maybe a little bit more, but less than one inch. Um, I'm assuming she was already a few years old or a couple years old when I got her. So, but she did give me two sacks and hopefully uh, nothing came out of the first one. I had babies, but none of them survived. Hopefully these four, I'm um, doing something a little different than I did with the first one. So hopefully these four will make it and we'll have four new little babies. But uh, there's a couple other things I want to uh, update. And uh, I'll be right back with the next thing. Okay, uh, what we're going to try and do now is feed this Brachypelmy Amelia. Still have yet to get this one to eat since it's molted. Um, hopefully this one will be the trick. I really like to get something into this one. <clears throat> Take the leaf out. Then I get something small to put in here for a hide for this little one. Um, it used to use that log over there, but it's gotten a little bit bigger. It doesn't really dig stuff underneath anymore. My handy dandy little poker. Now 
that's disturbing I'm doing her probably won't get her to eat any quicker but this one was a really good eater before this this molt and it hasn't even shown a bit of interest in feeding it always concerns me when you know after a molt like that they uh they don't show interest not that it's not uncommon <clears throat> and I haven't really gone through it a lot usually you know within a week or two smaller ones are ready to eat Within a couple weeks to three weeks the, the bigger ones are ready to eat I'm really really shocked that this one hasn't tried to take anything yet you know, maybe it's just she or he's being shy, doesn't want to eat on camera in front of everybody. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, that's super. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad. I'm, uh, that makes me feel better. Makes me feel a lot better. That used to be buried so that she had a little place to a little cave to go under it. We'll get her, we'll let her eat him, him, her, let him eat. Um, and then this weekend, uh, I'll get something in there for it to hide in. You know, none of my Amelia's have ever seemed to really like hides anyway, but maybe we'll just redo that log and repack the substrate down, put some fresh substrate in there, and put it in the corner so she can go underneath there. Okay, so we did get the Brachypalma Amelia fed, yay. And now uh, we'll move on to the next thing. So the next little update I want to do is they got a frog. This is a Pac-Man frog. And uh, I got it kind of to help keep the roach population and my colonies down a little bit. I know that they're pretty voracious eaters. Um, this is my first time trying with with uh, a pac-man frog we've had of course regular old american frogs that we've caught or you know found around here that we nursed back to health and released but uh never had one that we kept as a pet so we're gonna try i'm gonna try and feed it i'm not really quite sure that it'll be willing and ready It's still kind of acclimating. So I'm not really quite sure if it's going to be ready to eat or not. <clears throat> I know it'll be pretty interestingly cool when they do. I just wanted to throw this, this one in there. You guys can take a look at the new thing that you'll probably see here and there through through the videos <clears throat> put this hog log in there thinking that it might hide underneath there and it went right in there so I probably will keep this take this log back out it'll end up probably just you know with the moisture in here it'll probably well, I'm not just do it now probably end up just getting moldy anyway we'll use that for one of the spiders for something um, I know these guys are good eaters. I, I think it was fed the other day, so it may not be ready to eat yet. Uh, and it's never had, all it's had is crickets its whole life so far. So introducing the roaches might be a little bit different for it, but I'm just going to leave that one in with it and see what happens later. <clears throat> um, and I only have a, you know, a, I don't know, seven or eight maybe maybe 10 spiders that are eating the larger size dubias and um, where I put the roach colony this winter uh, was a little bit warmer than last winter so they've been breeding all through winter and it's hard to get rid of them and you can only use so many of them before uh, they 
just run rampant inside the enclosures and then you got to get bigger containers which just creates more space issues and I don't want to deal with with that um, so that's uh she's a female I didn't see the nuptial pads at all on her thumbs uh, probably about two and a half two three quarter maybe three inches at the most um, I'm still reading up a few things about them uh, I know I have friends that own them so I can rely on them to uh, help me out with any questions but uh, yep that's the new little dude dudette um, I think I'm gonna name her Cleopatra and uh, she's gonna be big about eight inches uh, female Pac-Man frogs get about eight inches so that's something that we'll be able to look forward to growing and uh, we'll do some great videos with her uh, clean out time and I don't me personally I don't plan on feeding any kind of rodents to her uh, it'll just be roaches um, I, I know how voracious their appetites might get so when she does get really really big I may have to consider doing that but I don't really want to I'd rather just use the bugs um, as feeders so okay that's the new little one and uh, we'll move on to I think I have one more thing we want to update okay everyone since I was looking around noticed that my Samopeus Polker female was out and she's looking a little skinny so I thought I'd try to never tong fed her before I don't tong feed a lot of mine actually um, it seems like the Samopeus aren't too bad to tong feed honestly she, she took it pretty easily um, this is the only confirmed female out of the four that I have. Of course, the other one's just a little sling. Um, I really don't like her setup. I did when I first put it together. Um, I thought that she would just kind of be on the front of the little crocodile skull there. But she's kind of made that her home and then burrowed underneath it. And since I saw her out, because that's where she was, she was on the side here. I saw her abdomen and she looked a little skinny, so I thought, well, let's give her a feed. This is Lakini. Um, again, the only confirmed female Salmopeus that I own. I've had nothing but males. I have two suspected male pulkers, the penultimate male Armenia. I had a mature male Cambridge Eye. So I'm really looking forward to her. Um, I think I would like to put her <clears throat> in something more permanent, something that she's going to be in probably for the entirety of her life. Um, but with my space confinement, I thought about, uh, they have like football helmet display cases or football, except not helmet. I use the helmet, but the football display cases and, um, they have another larger one. I can't remember what it is, but I think the football container one might be tall enough to build the do-it-yourself um, hinged front lid with those. I'm going to attempt it with a something smaller for my uh, Avicularia versicolor and maybe Avicularia urinensis. Um, this, the, the Polkers are my favorites. Um, I think you've all heard that. I think I've said it a few times, but uh, the Polkers are my favorites. It's not what really got me into it. Um, you know, the Smithy really kind of, now Hal Mori, really got me hooked. Um, when I saw those, I really, I just wanted a ton of them. But when I got my Polker in with my Armenia in November of 2015, um, as this one, well, not this one, but as Salem, my bigger one, uh, the the male as he started growing I just fell in love with their legs and their colors and you know how gentle he was and how open and out they are a lot you know with with the Armenias uh, they're they're strikingly black with those orange chevrons but you don't see them as much that's kind of what drew me to the Polkers a little bit more um, 
so I'm anxious to see her grow, even though ma mature male pokers are just gorgeous. Um, and, and Salem's really, really a nice looking spider. But I'm going to actually, it looks like my uh, unconfirmed male, Thorin, looks like he's ready to have a meal and he needs to have a new home. And uh, I think what I want to do is uh, I have a pretzel tub um, that's available and I think I might move my penultimate male, Erminia into that, into a more arboreal type setup uh, and see if he will be out more or if he'll just burrow and dig and live underground like he does now and then move Thorin into, a, it's a container like this. This is, um, I think there's dog biscuits. Uh, people at work gave these to me. I have like four or five of them. They're like little mini milk bone biscuit containers for dogs. Um, they're kind of nice. I wish that they didn't have these ridges because those ridges kind of, you could see in the video how it plays off the spider. But uh, I'm going to water her real quick. And then I'm going to get Thorn and feed him. And... That will probably be the end of today's doings. Okay, here is Thorn. I'm going to also try to tong feed this one. Okay, I'm going to let go. Super. You get a little bit more used to doing the thong feeding method. Okay, guys, so I'll move you up here so you can see him a little bit better. There he is. Out of focus. But how can you all love these things? Okay, so that's Thorin, and that's going to be the end of today's doings. Finish the video with two pulker feedings. I'll probably upload this tonight when I get home from work. So when you're seeing this, it'll probably be late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.